Okay, great. Can everyone see that okay? Yep, I can see it. Well, without any further ado, uh, hello, I am Christina Cole, and I'm here with Prajwal. Today we are presenting the NanoCap Table Project. And for a little bit of uh, background about ourselves, uh, my name is Christina. I'm currently head of documentation at Open Source Medical Supplies. I'm also co-founder and board treasurer of Reef Climate Center. Um, so like most folks at nonprofits, I do wear many hats. So I do everything from technical documentation to financial management, fundraising, um, all kinds of different things. It definitely keeps you very busy and very engaged. Uh, I am also a grad student pursuing my master's in accounting, I will be eligible to sit for the CPA licensure exam here in the state of California uh, next year. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, that kind of was my interest in this project as it pertains to finance and equity management. Prajwal? Yeah. Hi, I'm Prajwal. I am a incoming sophomore at Purdue University. and I'm studying computer science and economics with a minor in math. So my kind of interest in the project came from my interest at the intersection of finance and technology. So that's why I helped develop the application as well as work on some of the accounting stuff. Um, all right, so uh, before we introduce the project to you, I figured we would cover some very basic accounting introductory prin principles. So this is the accounting equation. A equals L plus E, that's assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. Um, and this is, you know, the most significant piece of math that you need <laughs> when beginning your accounting journey. So let's talk about what assets are. These are resources that are owned by a business. They're expected to provide future economic benefits. Um, these would be things like cash, inventory, property, or equipment. They can either be converted into cash quickly, so a current asset, um, or things that take a little bit longer, certain types of investments and whatnot. Liabilities are obligations that the business must settle in the future. So often through the payment of money, uh, delivery of goods or service, these would be loans, accounts payable, and mortgages. So think of something that you would owe money on. And equity, which is an important piece as it pertains to this project, equity is the residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting liabilities. So essentially what the owners claim on the assets are. So these are things like owner's capital and retained earnings. Double entry accounting. So double entry accounting is the foundation, foundation of modern accounting systems. Um, you'll hear this as like, you know, you see this in bookkeeping entries. You'll see this reported in financial statements. Um, this ensures that every single business transaction is rec recorded in at least two accounts. So it maintains the balance of the accounting equation, equation, which is your assets equals liability and equity. This gives a more complete view of the financial position of a company because you're tracking not only where the money is going, but where it came from. And how this works, this is a very simplified version. So recording transactions is the first step. And every transaction affects at least two accounts. One account is debited, which means it's increased, and another is credited to decrease it to keep the books in balance. Uh, this is a little bit counterintuitive to what you would think of debits and credits as it pertains to, say, your bank statement. So each transaction involves a debit and a credit. Um, these two transactions must always equal each other so that the accounting equation remains balanced. And I did find a nice simple example here. So let's say Adam borrows $300 from John. So what kind of accounting entries would we be looking at here? Well, Adam's cash account, which is an asset, is debited by $300. And remember that in this type of account, the debit reflects an increase in cash. However, at the same time, because he's borrowed that money, it's a liability is credited by 300. So that reflects Adam's obligation to pay John back. So this is a very, very, very simple demonstration of how double entry accounting captures both sides of the transaction. Um, so why is this important? 
Uh, accuracy and completeness, it does help prevent errors and make sure that financial statements are accurate. It's also very important for financial transparency. So if you're tracking both sides of a transaction, businesses can provide more clear um, and transparent financial information. And this is very useful for decision-making both inside the company and outside the company. So investors and stakeholders, and we'll get into that in a moment with equity. So now that we've talked about kind of double entry, we'll talk about T accounts. Um, if you're an accounting student or an accounting major, or you've taken any classes towards a finance degree, you'll probably remember how confused you were the first time your professors put this up on the board. Um, it's again, not super intuitive, uh, but it is very important. So this is a fundamental tool in accounting that's used to visualize and track movement of the money within an account. So think of that double entry that we just covered. They're T accounts because of their T shape and the left side will always represent a debit with the right side always representing credits. So the vertical line of the T separates the debits and the credits or the horizontal line will be used to list the account uh, being tracked. So there exists a T account for every type of account, assets, liability, equities, revenue, expenses, um, and every transaction can be reflected by doing the appropriate debit or credit from this account. So if we apply this to that accounting equation at the top here, um, we can break it down into assets, which are debits increase, asset accounts, credits decrease, um, liability is the inverse, and owner's equity or just equity, also the inverse. Um, and this changes a little bit when you get to revenues, expenses. There are some very specific rules for this. It gets complicated very quickly, but you think about it in terms of every equation or every entry increases or decreases equity. Um, and this, this kind of T account method shows you uh, the flow of the transactions. Again, so every transaction recorded in the books, there will always be a corresponding debit and credit. You'll hear accountants and bookkeepers say, well, it has to balance, or I need to reconcile this so that it balances. And that's so that the amounts uh, must be equal to one another. And there are some very, you know, additional practical uses of T accounts. Um, again, this is something that accountants will do to track the effects of a transaction before they record it formally. If you get stuck on Finding uh, a discrepancy, often sitting down and writing out a T account will help you figure out where it went. So again, the assets must equal liabilities plus equity. And what is equity? Um, so this is a word that we hear a lot. It can mean a lot of different things. So if we take this um, conceptually from an accounting or a finance perspective, specifically for startups, this is how you're going to evaluate a company's financial health and what it means to own a stake in this company or have some investment in it. So in accounting terms, uh, equity here represents the value that would be returned to company shareholders if all of the assets were liquidated and the company's debts were paid off. So this is essentially, you can think of this as the net worth of the company from the shareholder's perspective. So this is sometimes called shareholders' equity or owner's equity. It depends on the business structure. Generally refers to the same thing. If you think back to the accounting equation, you can also calculate this as equity equals your assets minus liabilities. So your equity is equivalent to what you have minus what you owe. Um, so equity is what is left after all obligations, your liabilities have been settled from the company's assets. And there are different types of equity, uh, most, most well-known, possibly common stock. So this is ownership in a company. Uh, to put it very simply, shareholders who own stock generally get voting rights, um, one vote per share, which they can use to influence major company decisions, um, including things like electing the board of directors. Um, it can also, you can also have a claim on a, a portion of the company's profits. Uh, usually in the form of dividends. So this is this is one way you get a return on your investments, um, but it's not guaranteed and fluctuates based on the company's performance, which is why investing in stocks can be um, high risk and high reward depending on the company. And so if you're a holder of common stock in the event of liquidation, your common shareholders are last in line to receive assets. So only after 
all of the debts and other obligations of the companies have been paid. So again, there's there's some real risk there. Um, now, preferred stock, if you want to think about kind of the next tier up, these stockholders have a higher claim on the company's assets and earnings than do common stockholders. So they receive their dividends um, before the common stockholders. They have priority in asset distribution if the company is liquidated. Um, however, they don't often have voting rights. Um, they don't have as much say in a company's management decisions. Um, and the dividends for this kind of stock tend to be fixed and cumulative. So if a company skips a dividend payment, uh, it must pay in the future before any common stocks are paid. And then retained earning can be retained earnings can be thought about as equity. Um, this is very simply, it's the portion of a company's net income that's not distributed as dividends. So it is reinvested in the business. And this can be used for expanding the business, paying off debts, um, also to be used for business operations. Um, and this is something that over time you would expect if the company is successful, the retained earnings to grow significantly. Um, it's a pretty good indicator of financial health for a company. So investors care a lot about retained earnings that are reported on uh, not just every year, but for the quarters. Um, now, how does this pertain to a startup? So equity is thought of differently, but still important in the context of startups. So it is speaks to the ownership structure. So uh, the primary means of ownership distribution among founders, so very early employees and investors, is uh, how the equity is divided, and it determines who controls the company and who benefits from its success. Founders typically start with 100% of the equity, which is then diluted as they bring in investors and employees with equity compensation. So that's often an appeal for startups, uh, for folks interested in joining them, that you, know, you will be given shares, you will be given equity, and that can be very lucrative if the company does well. Um, so for raising capital, startups raise capital by issuing these equities to investors in exchange for funding. Um, this does dilute the ownership percentages of the existing shareholders, but this is often how most startups get significant capital um, for their business. So often this could be, you'll hear terms like seed funding or series A, um, and then they will issue these shares to the venture capitalists. So oftentimes without this kind of injection of capital that comes from this activity, you would not really have uh, the money to even pursue the business venture in the first place. Um, and equity compensation. So startups will use equity as a form of compensation, especially when they're very low on cash. Uh, they'll offer stock options or shares to employees, typically pretty early on. This is kind of an incentive and uh, it does kind of ensure that the employee's long-term interests are aligned with the company as this type of compensation is tied directly to how well the company is doing. So the these early employers often become very invested in this. Um, and lastly, investor relations are pretty significant in startups as since equity is a key factor in managing relationships with investors. They're looking for a significant return on their investment. Um, so it's realized through an increase in the value of their equity stake over time. So these are through the dividends or, or capital gains if the company is sold or goes public. So those are some pretty big um, areas that, or reasons that equity matters in startups and also varies a little bit differently from the traditional uh, sense of equity in the accounting equation. And that brings us to this project, a cap table. So a capitalization, or a cap table is a it is absolutely important for anyone involved in a startup, um, not just founders, but also investors. It is a very important tool for tracking and managing ownership within the company. Um, it's essentially a detailed spreadsheet or document that outlines the equity ownership structure of a company. It includes information about who owns what percentage of the company, how much equity has been diluted over time, and the value of that equity in each round of investment. And this is important to note that this the table cap table is dynamic. It evolves with each new round of financing, stock option grant, equity issuance. Anytime somebody has buy-in, 
It tracks all the shareholders from founders and employees down to your, your investors. Um, and essentially it shows what or how much of the company each party owns as an individual. Um, it can also capture other data, so different types of equity, so common stock or preferred or stock options. If you get really detailed, it can have price per share, relevant terms associated with the different classes of shares. Um, so it's easy to see that, you know, why these tables are important, but just to get a little bit deeper into it, um, ownership tracking is at the top of that list. So it provides a clear record, again, of who owns what percentage of the company at any given time. Um, it helps founders and investors understand their current stake in the company so that they can make informed decisions about the future. It's important for investment rounds. So how, has, how does ownership change with each new round of funding or financing? When a company raises capital, it often issues new shares, which dilutes the ownership per ownership percentages of existing shareholders. So you can look at a cap table and you can still see how much equity is being given up in exchange for the investment and how this affects the overall ownership structure of all the shareholders that are involved. And this is also important for valuation insight. So this is kind of like taking the pulse on a, a, a company, whether it's a startup or a larger company, it gives you an idea of the company's valuation at different stages of growth. So if you're tracking the price per share over different rounds of funding, you can see how the company's valuation has evolved and maybe assess your own investment. It's also really important, um, this valuation insight for negotiation with potential investors because it does give that historical context. Um, so overall, very important for investor relations, decision making. Um, it's also worth mentioning that it can be useful for legal compliance. So a company, you know, has this good, we'll say, documentation related to its equity distribution and shareholder rights. So this can be used for compliance, maintaining an accurate and up to date cow table. Um, fulfills obligations to investors and also regulatory bodies. So in a lot of these early stage startups or, you know, very, very young companies, keeping track of who owns what and who is owed what is very important. Um, and this kind of gives you a stamp of that or a record of that. Um, and yeah, this is important too. So if a company is ever successful in preparing for acquisition or an IPO, uh, the cap table will definitely be something very valuable that legal teams and regulators would want to review before um, something as big as an IPO happens. So while it is technically a table or a spreadsheet, uh, it is more than just a table or a spreadsheet. And that brings us into this project, the nano cap table. And I will turn it over to Prajwal for this portion of the presentation. Thank you so much, Christina. That was a really in-depth kind of description of like the high-level overview of our project. And now I'm going to dive into the specific, like what NanoCap table actually like is, um, a little, a few technical details about it, and then we'll go right into a working demo. So NanoCap table is an open source free implementation of a cap table, like Christina described, for projects that need to manage and assign equity without jumping through the hoops of making a legal entity. So Christina went over how a cap tables are needed for legal compliance. They're also needed for things like making an LLC or having like an S corp, things like that. But some projects aren't that big and quite possibly might never get that big. Some projects don't even have anything to do with money. They could just be like a volunteer hours at a church or something. So though for those kinds of projects, it is very important to like have a way to distribute equity in the project, but you don't necessarily need some high level accounting software or like an LLC agreement to dictate that equity distribution. And now cap table kind of aims to come in and fix that because we what we've made is a serverless implementation of a cap table. So it's very easy to get up and running as you'll see in the video and also doesn't require any existing infrastructure to start. So yeah, we, we can get right into it. Hi them. there, I'm Prajwal, and welcome to this demo of NanoCap Table. 
NanoCap Table is a lightweight, open source tool designed to simplify the management of equity cap tables, particularly for early stage startups that aren't yet ready to form a legal entity. It's perfect for startups, small teams, and collaborators who want to ensure fair and transparent equity distribution without the overhead of legal complexities. Many early stage projects face the challenge of dividing equity among contributors, especially when the project's success is uncertain. Creating an LLC or other legal entity might be premature at this stage. Nano Cab Table solves this problem by providing a simple, backend free platform that runs entirely on GitHub pages. This means you can manage your cap table directly from your browser without the need for any backend infrastructure or complex setup. Let's dive in and see how you can start using NanoCap Table. A prerequisite to this is having your own personal GitHub account. But after you do that, the first step is to head over to the public invention GitHub organization and click on the NanoCap Table public repository. After that, we have to fork the repository or make a copy in our own account. To do that, we'll click the fork button in the top right corner. We want to keep the repository name the same name as it is in the public invention organization for sake of simplicity. But after that, just click on create fork and this will take a few seconds, but should be done pretty quickly. And there you go. You've successfully forked the NanoCap table repository into your own personal GitHub account. It should say forked from public pub inv slash NanoCap table in the top left corner. Now, once you've forked the GitHub repository, the next step is to customize some files and change some data to make our NanoCap table unique to our own personal GitHub accounts. So the first thing we're going to do is go into captable.json, click on the edit button in, in the top right corner, and clear the field in the JSON that is called table. So just completely copy that thing and clear it. Next thing we want to do is change the name to our own public, to our own personal name. So I'm going to name it Prajwal's cap table. Next thing is just to hit commit changes and commit the changes. After that, we'll go back to the code. Now navigate to server.js. Once again, click on the edit button in the corner. And we want, what we want to do is go to a constant variable called GitHub repo and change the first part of this URL to be our own personal GitHub username. So for me, that is ProjwalShot19. And since we didn't change the name of the actual repository, we can leave this the same. Once again, click Commit Changes, commit them. And now we are well on our way to publishing our NanoCap table to GitHub pages. Now let's make the application accessible via GitHub pages. So to do that, we'll navigate to the settings tab in the top right corner, and we'll navigate to pages under settings. Now, by default, it should say GitHub pages is currently disabled. Select the source below that enable GitHub pages for this repository. So we want to first of all deploy from a branch, which is going to be the main branch in our repository. We'll click on main right here, and it should go under root and essentially what that means is it's going to deploy the GitHub pages um, website from the, in the repository as a whole or the root. And then from that, we'll hit the save button. We want to enforce HTTPS just to keep our web page friendly to browsers. And then what should have happened occurred is that if you click on, on the actions tab, a workflow should have started. And this might take a few minutes to few seconds, you never really know. But as long as this workflow has started, you have successfully deployed your application to GitHub pages. Now, once your workflow has completed, you'll see a green check mark right next to it. And that means your site is live on GitHub pages. So what we can do to access it is navigate to settings, then navigate to pages and click on the visit site button. And as you can see, it should say the name of your cap table, which you said previously, dash nano cap table, and it should output a bare bones cap table with no entries in it. Now let's go over the first way to add entries to our cap table and calculate equity. 
So for any way to change the cap table, we must click insert entry. We give each user a name, a username, in case there's duplicates in the name, and assign them a number of shares. Now these shares are usually very arbitrary and don't have to have a dollar value assigned to them. After that, we click add record. As you can see, our cap table is updated with the correct timestamp as well as our name, username, and shares, and it cal has calculated our initial ownership. Now, obviously, since I'm the only one who has shares in the company at the moment, it gives my it makes my ownership 100. Initially, what it did was it outputted a JSON file, which we'll then use to copy and push into GitHub to update our cap table. Now, before we do this, let's add a few more entries just to make sure our cap table looks like a real professional cap table. So we'll add Robert Reed as one of them. As you can see, I gave Robert 200 shares, which diluted my own equity down to 33.33%. And we'll add one more. We'll add Christina Cole. And we'll give her 300 shares, which should in theory dilute both me and Robert's equity down, which it did. And what we're gonna do from there is as you can see, the output JSON table has updated accordingly with the correct timestamps as well as share count. So what we'll do is we'll copy this into JSON. We'll say copy to clipboard. We'll navigate back to our GitHub pages repository, click on code, click on cap table.json, click on edit this file, and completely overwrite this cap table with our new cap table, which we pulled from the user client, which is this website. After that, hit save and hit commit changes. Now what this will do is once the actions workflow is complete, so every time we make a commitment to commit to our GitHub pages site, it makes a new workflow to deploy it. Once that deployment is complete, what it should do in theory is it will update this. So like I'll show you right now, currently if I hit the refresh button, it removed all my entries because the JSON in the GitHub repository, which is where we store our data is not updated. But as you can see, this deployment is still pending. When, we, when the deployment is complete, which it should be done anytime soon, what it will do is it'll update the website so that the live website, which is accessible to anyone on the internet, will host the accurate updated GitHub pages, sorry, updated cap table, which should be this one. So as you guys can see, our latest deployment, which was updating the cap table with the new information has just completed. So now let's take a look at our live website and see how it's changed. We'll navigate back to settings, back to pages and click on the visit site button once again. And as you guys can see, our cap table is now updated with the information that we put put into our GitHub repository. Now, copying and pasting a JSON file is only the first method of updating our cap table to reflect current equity ownership. The second way to update your nano cap table is by using a GitHub access token. Now, making a GitHub access token is a task in and itself, so I'll put a link in the description on how to do it. Making, using a GitHub access token to update your nano cap table is much more streamlined as you don't have to copy and paste this entire JSON file into GitHub. However, it does come with an additional security concern as having a publicly available GitHub access token could lead to some kind of security vulnerability inside your GitHub account. That being said, let's get into how to use your GitHub access token to update your nano cap table. So we'll start by making a new entry to see if anything has changed. And I will just make a fake name and fake username and add some, give them some shares. So we'll click add record. And now, as you can see, our JSON is updated, but what we're gonna do instead of copying this link and putting it in a GitHub is we're gonna click on save to GitHub and paste your access token into this prompt and click OK. So uh, if this uh, occurs successfully, then the page will tell you that the file has been updated successfully. And to check that, we just need to go back into our repository, refresh it. And as you can see right here, cap table.json 
now, which means we just updated the file without actually changing it. And we'll see it once again, a new workflow has started. Now, once this workflow finishes, which it has, as you can see with the green check mark, we can navigate back to settings, back to pages, and open up our site once again. As you can see, without having to copy and paste anything into our GitHub, we have successfully updated the cap table with this new entry. And there you have it. You now have your own instance of Nano Cap Table up and running, ready to manage your project's equity distribution. As you continue to use the platform, stay tuned for future updates, including advanced accounting features and more customization options. We're excited to see how Nano Cap Table can help bring clarity and fairness to your early stage projects. As a further note, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to reach out via the contact information provided in the README. Also, please consider contributing to our project to help us build a more comprehensive tool for the community. Thanks for watching and happy collaborating. Hi there, I'm Prajwal and welcome to this demo. Well, I hope that wasn't um, too much to keep forward with. I know it was a little confusing at times, but if you have any questions, please hold them till the end when we answer questions. I'm just gonna go over a few future features that we wanna implement. So. When Christina was explaining the accounting concept to you, there was a big emphasis on double entry accounting because it's very important in accounting. And that's something we definitely want to implement in the future. Probably like our next step is actually just to implement double entry accounting in our cap table. So right now we have like a ledger of the um, cap table. Now we also want to have the other entry. To We want each entry in the ledger to be, I guess, entered twice. The next thing is uh, currently the bare bones version of nano cap table is serverless, but some organizations might want to use a server for those. So that's why we want to implement SQL int integration as well as containerization. Both of those tools help e help like startups using the product to implement this tool into their own servers and have a real life database managing them instead of like a GitHub repo. And those are just a few things we want to like add on to at the end of uh, as soon as we're done making the double entry ledger. All right, thank you. Um, so I would like to open things up now to a Q&A in case anyone does have questions or we would love to hear your first reactions to it or thoughts or if there's anything you need clarification on. So I'll go ahead and stop my screen share now. I haven't been keeping up with the chat, so I'll take a look there. Um, and we welcome anyone or everyone. Please don't be shy. Um, unmute yourself, ask away. Or give us feedback. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, I see Rob's here. Hey, Rob, go ahead. See Rob's hand up. Hey, sorry. I'm actually in uh, Robert's account. Oh, sorry, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's out of town this week, I think. So a uh, quick question I that comes to mind is security. You were talking about how this is all in the browser and this is through GitHub, kind of like a repository similar to the open source stance. What would be your advice regarding security for people who are trying to balance maybe like high secure profiles or things that they're a little bit more conscious of putting things on the internet, especially like I know I've worked for bosses that don't quite understand open source platforms and they're frightful of giving any type of information with finances online. Sure, I'll let Prajwal take this yeah. one. I, I uh, suspect the answer may have to do with tokens, but Prajwal, go ahead. Yeah, do you, so I, uh, when me and Robert were kind of like ideating this product, the whole, um, the whole kind of idea behind his vision behind it was the open source, like open source accountability. So some, so one of the reasons why this is an important project to have a cap table like this is because sometimes, at least from his experience, he said that when he's worked on startups, a lot of the founders don't really understand how equity works. And then they assign equity to people, it gets like lost in translation. So we wanted to make the actual website or at least the core like distribution of it, which is what I showed you guys in the demo video to be completely like open, open to anyone who wants to look at it as a public like link. 
And then that being said, in terms of like security of the token itself, which is a little, what I kind of like touched on in the video, that the token, using a token is not the best, is not the most secure way to update a cap table. It's just the most streamlined way. It's the easiest way. So if you are concerned about security, we don't have any like encryption, but that is maybe something worth noting. We could add some kind of encryption later on. Currently, our only source of encryption is making sure that the token you use belongs to you or you have access to your own GitHub account. So in so I guess that being said, our encryption is kind of like we're using GitHub security, which is it's a very secure platform. It requires all users to have two-factor authentication. And you need to like open up your phone. Like whenever I want to log into GitHub, I need to open up my phone, open up the app, and then like tell the write the numbers down on the computer. So it is a pretty secure platform and all of our security right now stems from like GitHub's own security guidelines and criteria. That's a, it's definitely worth noting how we can make the platform more secure in the future while maintaining its like integrity as like an open source platform. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I loved your response to that because I think the biggest challenge with open source one is getting enough, I guess, big features or larger corporations to have a hand because a lot of open source grew out of companies like IBM or Google who had a hand in developing those projects. So making them secure enough that those corporations would entrust data with it or information publicly and two, having that open source nature that we love, which is allowing the public to see everything, honestly, because even large corporations, I think like the who don't provide public ledgers of this sort. I don't know if I'm using the right financial terminology, but um, yeah, and I think that's what disheartens a lot of people from donating is the fact that they don't quite know where the money is truly going and how it's dispersed. So I think your project is very innovative in that way of trying to meet both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah trans, you know, I feel like open source and transparency often do go hand in hand. Um, a lot of people that are in the open source space value that transparency. And I think this is a great project to enhance that, especially in, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of startups are, you know, they're competing for the same funding or even in nonprofits, they're competing for the same funding. It can be very cutthroat. So just having a way to transparently and honestly reflect that equity, I think is very valuable. And one thing that I, I am realizing here that, Prajwal, I apologize. I think I do, I did skip over one slide about features and technical details. So uh, well, would you want to cover that? I know it was covered in the demo a little bit, so I, I apologize. I can just go over like the stack we're using, which um, for the more technical people, they'll understand it. We're using, it's very lightweight and the goal is always to make it very lightweight. So there's very few dependencies. You can, you'll see in the repository, there's two dependencies we have, which is jQuery and Bootstrap. So we're using HTML and CSS for the core web page, JavaScript. JavaScript is the implementation for the connection to GitHub as well as the cap table itself. It's all implemented in JavaScript. And then jQuery and Bootstrap are just built on top of that. And the, I guess the important part with all of this like stack related um, jargon is that it's very lightweight and that's always how we wanted to make it. I know I initially wanted to make it using a JavaScript framework, but Robert was like, that's it's just unnecessary for a project like this where the goal is for it to be as accessible as possible so people on any kind of computer anywhere in the world can use it. That's all I really have about that. No, that sounds great. Um, would it be okay if I go ahead and stop recording? I think just so people might feel more comfortable also to answer yeah. and ask questions. I would say go ahead and we'll we'll end this recording now. Uh, thank you, Megan. And if anybody.